everyone, it's your girl Darlincia, and I am so excited for this episode of Creative Spotlights Unplugged. Today we're going to do something different, and we're going to have an inside look on a popular Haitian restaurant here in Brooklyn, New York. Everyone, I want you to give a warm welcome to Nadej, owner of Bun and BK. <laughs> Absolutely. I saw your um your restaurant on Instagram and I'm like, I need to check it out. And then our girl Rose, who was also a panelist at Looney on Patient Creatives, she's one of the ambassadors or the ambassador of hate the Bunnelby. ambassador. The amb one and only, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, I have to check it out. Yes, thank you so much for coming to Brooklyn. Yes, yes, you know, I'm from here, so <laughs> that's true. You're originally from Brooklyn, right? Yes. yes. So, yeah, so thank you for joining us. Absolutely. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and what inspired this fusion restaurant called Bun and BK. Uh, well, again, being a Brooklyn girl, even yeah. though I was born in Haiti, came here at seven, uh, but my whole upbringing was, you know, immersed in Haitian, Caribbean culture, right. then going to Brooklyn Tech meeting diff different people from different spaces. Yeah. And when I got to college, I went to Columbia undergrad. And Period. I, <laughs> I believe. Okay, come on. Okay. But then I realized most people didn't look like us. And it was an opportunity for me because I was super homesick. It was my first time away from mm. home. And I realized, oh, wait, so your family was back in Haiti still and you just... No, I was here with my dad. It was just okay, the two okay. of us. But it's just the fact that I went away to on campus even though it was only manhattan yeah. it felt like so far away from brooklyn you know mm -hmm. different culture you're in a very white campus you know yeah so I, I was so homesick and food was my comfort so right. i started cooking i started cooking for friends but then i realized through food people were like oh my god what's that what's this black looking rice you got <laughs> da, da, da. Not the black looking rice. you know so i was like no so then i was like oh there's an opportunity to tell them a little bit about haiti so Period. i started sneakily trying to educate people about haiti and then I realized through food conversations, I was able to talk about Haiti in a nicer light, beyond Absolutely. the six o'clock news headlines. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could yeah. really share real information, the culture, the heritage, and the beauty. Right. And I've been doing that since 2002 through food. Started a catering company as my little side hustle. Period. Gotta have a side hustle. <laughs> which grew. Yeah. And now we're one of the exclusive caterers at the Time Center, which is the New York Times event space. Right. But then when it came to opening a restaurant, I was like, I don't want to do a restaurant. It's too much work. Oh, the staffing. Right. But then I love Bunnan. I love mm. Bunnan. And not only I love Bunnan. Deuce or? I'm a green Bunnan lover. Oh, okay. I am a come Haitian. on. We, we're not Bunnan Deuce fans. Because you're the right? Haitian Americans. <laughs> I realize that. And it's funny what you say that because the. Sweet planted is fast becoming one of the more popular items right. here. But not only we love banana as Haitians, and I realize South, you know, Latin American yes. countries yes. love banana. Right. Africans right. love banana. Absolutely. And then my whole work around food is always trying to show food connections, right? Right. And I was like, oh, the fact that everybody loves plantains, why not create a space where plantain is the star wow. not the dim or so banana when you order a Sandwich. dish yeah like you go to a jamaican restaurant they give you two right. little sweet plantains you go to the dominican they, you know you gotta order a whole right. side of plantains no i wanted banana to be the main star wow. and then that's how banana was born the name b-u-n-n-a-n -N -N, is a play on the haitian creole word banana which is yes. b-a-n-n-a-n people are like oh you can't spell banana i was like i know how to spell banana <laughs> you know it's just that you know, it's just that fact, like, I really wanted to highlight the fact that our buns were, were made right. out of banana. banana. So the bun is right. a banana, right? And then also the fact that, you know, like, it's a Haitian Creole word. And I wanted people to know that this is a Haitian Asia word. So, yeah, it's a B-A-N-N-A-N-N. -N 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 turned into a banana, and it's a play on the word. And then, and then we and BK. We and BK, so... It was just a love affair. And then we have like us, our griot. Because it's like a play on fritai as well. If you know Haitian cuisine, you know fritai is king. And yes, at night, yes, it's yes. community. So I wanted it to have that feel where we're frying our plantains. We have our griot. We have our tassel. Jerk chicken to pay homage to our other okay, Caribbean I'm hungry. brothers and sisters. Listen. You know, we have our red snapper. We even have mushroom because we have a lot of vegetarians. We have a lot of right, vegans. Right. And Bananas are naturally gluten free. So I was like, it really is a space to show that we are more connected right. through food than we are different, you wow. know? So mm -hmm. through that, Bunnan was born and it's just been a wonderful journey being in Flatbush, which is a very diverse yeah. community more than ever. 
Um, and I don't think some of you know, I was actually born on Flatbush. So wow. I feel like this is like a full circle moment full for myself. Full circle, especially this space we're in too. Yeah. Even though I never mm -hmm. wanted a restaurant, the fact like it's at Flatbush Central, which is the Caribbean marketplace. Absolutely. I grew up here. This used to be like a flea market. And I used to come here on Saturdays with my dad, the vendors, the Haitian vendors. Some of them are still here wow. in the food court. I see Bobies are still around. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Selling traditional Haitian products, your Jonjon, your Razak, mm. your Biennette. Oh my God, not the Razak. <laughs> oh Lord. Your Biennette. So to open it in a, this modernized, beautiful food court. And it's just like I said, for you just, and for me, it's like a full circle moment as well. So glad to be here i love that i love the the, the 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 way this was created and how it was birthed and that there's so much more meaning than hey i'm just a you know haitian restaurant owner no shade <laughs> but you know there's so much like behind it and the impact that you're making not only for the haitian community but for the caribbean community as well so <laughs> let's get into the banan sandwich yes so, Tiffany, what, what we have here so our sandwich is you know really banan we have a banan this one was yeah. i knew you were a banan juice lover Mm. Maybe we'll get you a banan douce. Now, how could you do that? Because I'm a chef a little bit too. And you know, banan douce is really soft. So we do the semi sweet. You know, when it's yellow, but it doesn't have the black spots on okay. it. Okay. Okay. Then, a few you know, in, yeah, so a few weeks in. So it's still sweet. Yeah, yeah. So you, we have that. But this is a green planted. Okay. Can I get the sweet one? I can just like, let me get you a thing. sweet one. Okay? Let's get the sweet one. Let's get She's going to, we're going to do a challenge. Yes. <laughs> so I had to get you some sweet banana. Okay. You're sweet. And you know what? This is really a good combination. That sweet banana and the savoriness of the tasso cabrit. Mm. And then you have the caramelized Wait, onions. for those that don't know, what is tasso cabrit? Tasso cabrit is goat. It's mm. basically like a, you yes. know, fried goat. We bake it here. Yeah. Trying to keep it a little healthy. The banana is fried. So we bake our meats to make the sandwiches and stuff. Good. We're going to put on some gloves because you're the chef today. I'm just here to I'm show. I'm the chef today. I'm just cook here to show. Because you told me you could cook. Listen, I got I to gotta sit you down one day. Okay. <laughs> so we have our sandwich. So like I said, here we either use the green plantains right. or we use the sweet plantains. So you right. see it's a little bit more caramelized. Yes. So we're going to take this. I'm going to drop it in the fryer and then you're going to put the sandwich together. Okay. okay. So Ooh. all we do is we fry this. So that's our buns. Okay. While this fry, then when it's ready, we're gonna put it all together. All right. So how did you come up with the combination? To, is this this is peakleys? Peakleys. And this is red cabbage slaw. Okay. Caramelized onions, and then the tasso. Do you have different types of like toppings for your sandwiches or? So this is our standard topping, so people can have all, or they can choose to have just you know whatever. Right. But right. this is what we were really thinking. We wanted our meats to have that flavor of your Ippies, your Haiti mm. flavors, right? right? And our right. jerk chickens have that nice Caribbean flavor. But then the caramelized onions, I just think caramelized onions make anything better. They're good. Right. Yeah. But then the red cabbage slaw is like a sweet. It's not like spicy like the pickles. Is. Right. It's red cabbage. It gives it some nice color. We mix that with scallions, mm. carrots, but it has like a rice wine vinegar, which has like a more sweeter taste. Wow, so I just feel like, good, yeah. again, being a, in a, a chef the last 20 years, even though I didn't go to culinary school, food is what I do. And I love dining. I love right. traveling to mm -hmm. eat. I travel to eat, girl. Okay. <laughs> so I don't buy shoes, but I travel. <laughs> so I just really love mixing flavors. So whenever I taste something, I'm like, mm, how you would want this... that explosion of flavor within, you know, each person's mouth? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then that way you get that sweetness with it. And then now you add this the kick. kick. Mm. Pow, pow. I love peakleys. I'm a person. I would eat peakleys and bread. <laughs> really? Like, I love peakleys. Is a salad is your salad or is yours peakleys? It's peakleys, but let me let me be honest, right? We are in Flatbush. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more gentrified. So it's a balanced peakleys. You right. get the kick, but it's nothing that's gonna be like, oh my god, Too it's so much. hot. Yeah, that you can handle standard. it. It has to be a standard. Because yeah, we have Smothersburg, which is in Williamsburg right. and in Prospect Park. It's it's a diverse audience. Okay. So we basically right. try For we're gonna we're gonna yeah. Some people have come here like, oh my god, the picnic is so hot. And then we have other Haitians that be like, oh, <laughs> <That's pima. it. laughs> so we have to find that balance, right? right. But then you know, like, it's a good mix. Right, Overall, right. you're going to enjoy the experience. And that's really how you get all these different flavors. Because you have your bun on the crispiness or the sweetness of the sweet plantain. Right. Your meat, your caramelized onions, your red cabbage slaw, and then pow, your pickles. And then, of course, you also have our secret sauce, which you know, the you know we can't sauce. tell you what's in it. But you know, hey, y'all can. Good. I wanted to know. Shoot. Rosie tried to steal our secret really? sauce. But, you know, they be coming in here trying to steal I it. Mean, but, and then uh, we also have watch. 
we also have this. Is this like butter or like this no? Muffin that's our butter? dipping. So it is like our dipping water because you know banan. You don't need it for the banan douce, but if you're making a green banan, you want to dip it in a nice season. So I was always raised water. with knowing um, vinegar and salt. Yes, is that kind of what it is. So this is our secret mix. It's Another like secret. All these sour. secrets. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like sour orange mixed with our seasoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you really want the sour orange is to give it that nice yellow feel, you know. So why wouldn't you add that with the banan douce? Like it's not necessary it... because again, remember the banan douce is already softer, right? So we don't want it to break apart with the glow and everything okay. like that. So okay. the the sweetness of the banan is already fine on its own. I'm right. gonna remove this so we could place our sweet banan when it's ready. We love fusion. So I hope as you all are watching, you can kind of pinpoint pinpoint like the certain fusions that's taking place. We have like the authentic Haitian um inspired um components and then like some of the American and Caribbean as well. So it's a bunch of like different things. Yes, you gotta together. mix it up. Again, like I said, we yeah. live in a very global world right now right. where Haitians are marrying non-Haitians. People have different friends. Right. Because think about it, for us yeah. right now, our perfect plate may be do you some days, but another day another day you may want a nice do you John with a piece of jerk chicken. You may want it with a nice Jamaican that's oxtail, it. right? Because that's, that's, that's the world right. we're living in. Yes, so that's yes. why this, for me, as much as we are Haitian, we're always going to promote Haiti. Absolutely. We want people right. to understand, like, we're here to kind of, like, blend it all together. Right. Nice. Okay. I love nice. that golden brown color. Yes. So it's going to be a little darker because, you know, it's the it's the sweet banan, so it gets caramelized. Yes. And then we're going to take it. Okay. And then you're going to take your meat. Mm-hmm. So let's load this is it the up. The tasso. Yes. Am I being shy with the with the with the grip? Mm, get in there, cause you remember you're eating this. This is your sandwich, so okay, you better so put I'm saving none for my photographer. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be alright. <laughs> so you load it up, and you want to spread it because that way you want to make sure every bite has some meat in it, right? Yes. And then we're gonna do that, and then next you're gonna add your caramelized onion. Okay. Mm. And like I said, I feel like this binds it all together. Yes. Okay. If you get good at this, maybe you could join us. Listen, on staff. Like, come on. <laughs> Look at that. Yes. And now, we, would you just load the um cabbage? No, we're just you know, just it makes us a light layer, okay. you know, because again, you don't want anything to be overpowering, right? Right. Because you want everything to have its little time to shine absolutely and then boom you have that look at that Already and then the pretty so i love pickly so, so i'm not gonna be shy don't okay? be shy with the pickles, girl all right she said it's not salad it's, <laughs> it's pickles. and then look at that Beautiful. and then oh look at that wow everyone look, look at all the colors and yeah and then you grab your sauce the secret sauce the she secret won't tell sauce. us maybe off camera i can probably grab the sauce. <laughs> and then you all around yes nice wow. good to go and then this is your banan bk tasso sweet plantain sandwich look at this now that i don't know how you i don't know how you created this because this right here i'm not seeing i don't see no one else doing this <laughs> no one else yeah i mean i've had plantain sandwiches before but this is i wanted to like i said this to be the star right and i wanted it to have like i said my flavors the yes, things that i yes. love that i know could tie well together right and that anyone can enjoy whether you're haitian haitian american you can right. enjoy this all right so how do i bite into this I gonna, just... it's a it's a nice fun sandwich okay you sure i just put some lip gloves on so <laughs> all right just get in there <laughs> mm -hmm. i got some shouting <laughs> like this is so good so it's like literally like fuse is like like fireworks in my mouth. I like that. Pause, but um, <laughs> the tasso have this kick in it that's like jerkish a little bit. Did you put like jerks? We didn't I tell you the secret. I'm not the story secret, y'all. <laughs> secret, secret. And then the bun on deuce just gives this like a sweet flavor, the cabbage, the sauce, the pickles. Oh my goodness. You did your thing. Thank you. No, this was mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys have to come to Bun and BK. Where can they find you? Where can they find the restaurant and when? So we're located at 2123 Caton Avenue in Brooklyn, New York, 11226. And we're open six days a week, Tuesday through Saturday. We're from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then on Sundays from 12 to 7. And then on the weekends, we have free thai boxes. We have plantain pizza. We have Please, plantain a sweet pizza. plantain <clears throat> waffle. Our whole thing is we're taking plantain to the all next its level dimensions and levels. Wow. Okay? But always centering Haiti. Like I said, on the yeah. weekends, we're at Smorgasburg, at Williamsburg, and Prospect Park. Yeah. And we're like the first Haitian concept that's part of that food activity. Congratulations and the whole premise is like, let's keep pushing the cuisine. Right. Okay. Whenever mm -hmm. we have a little opportunity, we let people know we got tasso, we got grill. Yeah. But at the same time, we're also moving and packaging it sometimes you know to right. to fit the times a little bit and and the environment we're in so but i may be coming to a neighborhood near you where should we go <laughs> philly <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much everyone stay tuned because we're about to transition into the sit down discussion hey everyone welcome back so we were able to have a behind the scenes look on how nadesh prepares the bun on bk sandwich now let's get a deeper look into the chef. So you don't only just own a restaurant or cook, you do some other things as well. I was able to dig through your page and I saw that you do something called a curl of the day. Could you expand a little bit more about that? I mean, for me, like I said, going over to college and feeling so disconnected from home, Connecting to Haiti was kind of like my solace. That was my comfort. Yeah. But beyond that, I think I'm a teacher at heart, like educating mm. people about Haiti. And it's magnificent. Despite the turmoil and all yeah. that exists, I always want people to know there's beauty in our culture. It is. In our heritage and our history, right? And two things can exist at the same time. Right. So uh, the Creole word of the day was an idea that I was working with a social media manager and he was like, you should do Creole word of the day. And I was like, my audience already speaks Creole. But he's like, yeah, but, you know, it's a great way of pe for people to connect with you. And you already love teaching. Right. You already done a lot of things around that. And I was like, let me implement that. Oh, my God. I did not realize people would so connect to it. <laughs> because I realized language, right? Beyond the food, the dancing, yeah. the music, all of that. Language is another form of connection. It is. For us to maintain our identity, mm -hmm. remain connected to who we are. But what also happened was, again, that beyond our backyard, other cultures, we have Jamaicans, we have other Latin American countries, African countries, where they're yeah. like, oh, we have a word similar to that. Right. Or we have proverbs similar to that. So what started off as a fun way of engaging with the community became a way of just like, wow, right. we are the same. We do have something right. similar. I could learn something from you. And like somebody said the other day on one of the comments, oh my God, I'm going to send you a check because I'm learning Creole. Well, there we page. go. Who needs Duolingo <laughs> when we have Curl of the Day? And then they're so fun. Like people said that too. They're like Duolingo, you know, it's always pay and let bread yeah. and milk. But with you, you get in the deep nitty gritty of so, the stuff. So what's the Curl of the Word today? The word of the day is a form. A form. <laughs> a form, you know, a form could be like, you know, the person is bad. They look good. Yes, like period. They, yeah, 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 whatever. Uh -huh. But it could be like, I'm good. You know, everything right. is going well. Life is good. So, new my, 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 new a form. New a form. New a form. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that. So, with that, you kind of tapped into the content creation world. Yeah. So, you, you're taking it a step further because that's a lot juggling was trying to keep the restaurant maintained and getting guests and customers and things like that. So how do you like manage being a restaurant owner and, you know, tapping into the content creation world? I mean, entrepreneurship is in my blood, right? I yeah. started my first business when I was literally, what, 20 years old. I was a junior in, high, in college, junior in college. And I started my catering business, as I mentioned, as a right. side hustle, right? So that's really been the bulk of what I do, catering. And it's 22 years later and yeah. I'm still going. Um, but being an entrepreneur, especially when you're bootstrapping that business, you kind of learn to do everything. I started my business when Facebook was kind of like just for college students, right? right? Like I was here when I was in college when Facebook started. So Facebook was my first platform 
that really showed me the power of social media right. and what it means to use the platform to grow a business. So I, you know, I used to have events because for me, events was a great way for people to know what I did. Right. Uh, it's one thing to tell people you're a caterer. It's another thing to throw a beautiful, lavish ball or party and then they can see your beautiful setups and how right. you can do things. So I started really seeing the power of social media yeah. in just as a way of growing my business. But through that, as the years evolved and Instagram comes about, right, TikTok right, right, comes right. about, you kind of yeah. like, oh, how do I implement these other components? So what started off as a way of growing my business opened another avenue yeah. for me. Because I, I make money on my social media. I make right. money with brands reaching out because they love how I engage my followers. Mm -hmm. But I didn't set out to grow an influencer pl platform. Right. I set out to grow my businesses. Right. You know? And then through that, other things became Through birth. that, yeah. So I've been invited to festivals and events where I'm being paid to travel to different countries. Right. I had a beautiful um, uh, social media um, uh, collab with Ria Transfer because again I'm Haitian. Yeah. I'm always talking about my dad, and they're like, "Where's your mom?" I'm like, "My mom is in." Haiti. We need to get her dad on the show, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it was kind of like, "Oh, okay, we'll pay you because your audience yeah. is real." And I think that's the one thing. I don't have a huge platform. When you think about sixty thousand followers, it's okay. But the one thing about my audience, and I've always told people, even when I was at like a thousand or five thousand followers, they are loyal. They respond. They purchase my products. Because again, like I said, I was trying to grow a business. I wasn't just trying to be popular. I was trying to be profitable. Let's stay on that really quick. <laughs> Let's stay on that really quick. Because we have a lot of entrepreneurs or aspiring creatives or entrepreneurs who want to, they feel as though they need followers in order for their business to grow. Talk to us a little bit about that. No, not at all. I've been <clears throat> making money on my social media if you're not 500 followers because it was 500 people who really needed what I had to offer. And you mentioned that when you did have like 1K followers, they were loyal followers. Yes, yes. Okay. They still are loyal. Like yes, during the yes. pandemic, I really was in a panic as a caterer. Events were shut down. Right. I'm thinking I, I'm right. making no money. Right, you know, right, this right. ain't going to happen. But then I turned on my camera. And then mm. that same audience that I had been, you know, or connecting with and grooming right. with, they tuned in. Right. I created a t-shirt line, the professional Ipav. Yeah. They were <laughs> buying it. And I mean, I was shocked. Like it was the first idea I had, but they just wanted me to, when your audience loves you and what you do and it really connects right. to them, every that's really what you need. So they love, because my audience is black women yeah. for the most part, some men, right. but I know it's mainly black, Haitian, Haitian American, and then, other like immigrants who feel the connection to the issues that I talk so about. So you discovered your target audience. Target audience. That's one of the first difference. steps that I would say that yeah. when starting a business and when trying to grow your platform is investigate, see what your who your audience is. And then you're gonna do that only through trial and error, right? As yes. you post whatever it is you're passionate about, right, right, what you right. like, it's like see what the response are. So you may like sometimes I'll have a post, it only has like 10 comments right but that's the post that's gonna give me a twenty thousand dollar contract because somebody sees like i'll give you another example like i teach i teach entrepreneurship to young people yeah because but it was from a superintendent in me posting a basic little post and telling a story about my dad and me deciding to be an entrepreneur how he was unhappy about yeah. that me being an immigrant you know, your parents want you to be a doctor, lawyer, lawyer you know, engineer, or else you're useless, right? But through telling that story, she was like, oh, my God, my students need you. Yeah, They need to see how you became successful in what you do. And I love how you teach entrepreneurship. But then I also love you will be able to connect to my students. That has gotten me a contract year after year right. in a specific school. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you're looking at the metrics... This post probably has a hundred and something, two hundred saying like, but it probably is what's making me the most money versus a post that I have. Everybody's like, oh my God, this is so funny. Right, right, right. And then it's like a million, a million views, but what really comes from it? So you really have to stay true to yourself too. Yeah. And really, like I said, find that tribe. Find that tribe. Um, I can so relate to that. I know for myself, sometimes it can be discouraging when you work so hard on the content, you don't. It didn't get the, the traction that you thought it would get, Ooh. but that shouldn't discourage you to stop posting. Agreed. Keep on posting. And I love that you shared that because you never know if that's that one post that had maybe 10 likes might be the post that reached an investor's desk. 
Yes. And now they want to invest in you for something greater. Yeah. So I love that you mentioned that. Now, I'm sure juggling as much as you juggle in the, in, you know, as an entrepreneur, it can be a lot. So what are some like, what is like a memorable like experience or challenge that you face throughout your entrepreneur journey? And how did you overcome that? Ooh, challenge one. That's like a million. That's every day. <laughs> that is true. But the first one I went through, I'll, I'll mention a couple, but the okay. first one was the recession of 2008. I was a social caterer, right? That was the, uh, that was, I was a corporate caterer at first. So I was mainly doing like company events, big corporate functions, right? I'm six, seven years in business. We're doing okay. But the recession hits. So what happens when recession hits? Companies are like, we're no longer having our lavish right. parties. Can we get some water? You know what? Eliminate the water. Yeah. Holy event is canceled. So I was like, oh my God. So that forced me to be so innovative and creative right. in terms of like understanding what is it that I'm providing. It wasn't just about food. Because I think at first, sometimes we focus on the product that we're creating, forgetting like what's the impact. So I really started, that's really when I started really connecting to Haiti. Because I realized beyond just serving food, how I started was cooking for my friends at Columbia University mm -hmm. and really creating that environment of learning. So I started like, go back to that, tap into that. And through that, I started promoting Haitian cuisine in right. a beautiful way because as growing up Haitian, people would be like, my mule pa monte tab. Like, you don't serve my mule at the dinner table. You don't serve this type of food. And I was like, you know what? Hold my purse. I'm going <laughs> to show you that you can do right, the Haitian right, food right. that we love for your weddings, for your funerals, wow. for all of these things. Because at the end of the day, even if there's a recession, you're going to get married and you're going to want a beautiful yeah. wedding right so i sort of be like oh social catering maybe there's money in it it's a lot of stress mm. uh i don't even do as many social events because i went back to my corporate roots <laughs> yeah. i mean I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know but, but that situation <laughs> that recession showed me like you have to come up with always innovative ways of creating right. i started doing cooking classes because i was like i gotta pay these bills man so i know food food is right. the anchor right but what are the different things that i could build i right. started my author uh, career like writing because I was like I know food what else can I do with it so that challenge forced me to be creative and innovative and I think that's one of the important traits of entrepreneurship starting this baby banan I never wanted a restaurant because it's so every yeah, you day that earlier yeah so every day so much work so the challenge for me was managing staff like I'm not a manager I'm an entrepreneur I'm a visionary yeah I I've accepted that like if I have a weakness it's management because I assume you know. I assume you can create. I assume you can find solutions. And when you're running a day-to-day -day business, like a restaurant, right. you can't make those kind of assumptions. So I had to really develop that muscle and that skill set of really grooming people. Right. And I just think That's about exactly our manager, that. and I'm, it's one of my proudest things to see how she's grown because she's young. You know, and it was just like, oh, this is a stopping point for her where she's just going to come make a little change. But I can see over the last year how she's grown, taking ownership of the space, right. developing all other workers and developing herself. Right. So I think I'm proud of that to be able to be a contributor to that because like I mentioned, right. I'm a teacher at heart. So to me watching that, even though the restaurant, I'm like, yeah, it's nice to do banan, but watching the people yeah. that we work with and seeing how they're growing that's like my proudest thing moments. i love that i love that you know i feel as though when as leaders it's not you also have a mission to also lift up other people behind you so what are some things that you're doing in the community to also kind of like inspire and encourage um aspiring uh creators or or entrepreneurs or just people who want to do things for their lives and just don't know like how to start or what to do i mean again i think my main thing is my platform I think, yeah and I feel, I feel like you're doing that in so many different ways <laughs> yeah i think my my social media platform the one thing i've been from the beginning is honest you know like i mm. share the struggles i share the reality but i think anyone who's followed me i think that's another reason why my audience is so connected because they've seen the journey right yeah. they the one thing they'd be like this girl grinds yeah. it's a grind you gotta work like I know we live in that era of soft life, <laughs> you know, you know, it's time, it's time for our soft your life generation, <laughs> no es bueno, yo fácil. like we like things to be a little yeah, bit yeah. easy and we want that eventually. But, but I also think that component of hard work, it does. I mean, 
Yeah. I'm not saying you have to struggle. Right. Because a lot of people will say Nadesh promotes struggle culture, maybe. I, I mean, like, you know, grind culture, maybe I do. Because it's what's worked for me. Yeah. Nothing happens without hard work. But I think I'm, I'm always pushing the narrative, like, you got to work hard. Yeah. Like, people will look at me, they're like, oh, my God, last year, I remember, you know, like, June, I went to Colombia. July, I went to Panama. August, I went to, you know, South Africa. And they're like, oh, you always traveling. But I was like, you didn't see those 10 years when I didn't, I couldn't even go to New Jersey because I was grinding and working so hard. So I tell people, like, these things only happen through the hard work because right, that's why right, you do right. use your youth, put in that time, put in the work, and yeah. do that. So I teach in the schools. I have an event space in Crown Heights here in Brooklyn. We open the space to community events. We open it to partnerships we teach cooking classes to young people we teach entrepreneurship like we we and we make the space when community people need it for something we understand you can't pay the rate of somebody else when someone reaches out to me on social media the one thing you know that there's will answer you like if i don't answer she you, does because... answer I, I text her at 8 a.m but she gets back to me so that's true yeah. if, some, if i don't answer i don't see it i didn't see it but and i say try again because i always feel like you said like I'm not where I am by myself. Somebody saw something in me, supported yes, me. Yes, right, and right, that right. support doesn't mean like they gave me money or they gave me a job. It could just simply be like they listened to me. They gave me a piece of advice, yeah. like little things like that. Like somebody I remember, like I still quote people to this day. Like she was like, if you, if you plan to be on time, you're already late. That stays with me. That is one thing that right. someone said, but it stays with me. So I think it's important that we do answer people right especially somebody young who's starting something out like at the same time i tell people when you reach out to somebody who is busy don't take it personal if they don't respond to you because they're busy <laughs> we've been taking it personal Do i'm not gonna hold you no, <laughs> my production sister she she to the audience. yeah because we take it personally and then also too let's be realistic right you're reaching out because you need something mm. right you need something. So that person has to take time out of their crazy life, managing right. staff, managing payroll, trying to pay some bill or whatever to yeah. answer you. So you have to offer them some grace because they may not be in a space to because they got their own lives going on. It ain't about you. Because we're always like, oh, if That's I can PT, I'm small. You know, it's because they, they don't see the value. They probably don't because they got other stuff to manage. And that's okay. So I do say don't take it personally. Do reach out. Like, try a couple of times yeah. because people do miss posts um and then also like i said if they even if they never respond just like you know what keep it moving because somebody's gonna answer you you know mm, that's Don't so give good now, you are really <laughs> i want to just sit down and talk all day no but that that's so good because i know even for me as a as a um, creator and entrepreneur it can get discouraging it really could get discouraging but just like you said like one, don't take it personal. Darlene, see, don't take it personal. <laughs> don't take it personal. Don't, don't take, take it personal. It personal. Well, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the new word of the day. That's the <laughs> yeah. sentence of the day. Yeah. We can. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Like I said, people and people are juggling a lot. Like, you know, people always say more money, more problems. It's real. Because yeah, 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 yeah. my bills here are no longer what it was 10 years ago, right? Because right. you got like five people depending on you to pay them, whether you make a dollar or not. That's a real issue that entrepreneurs have to manage right wow, so when yeah. imagine you hit them up in a week when they're like they don't know how they're gonna make that payroll right <laughs> <laughs> no, that's real that's real i love that i don't want to end this conversation without us getting into your book everyone <laughs> let's take a look to the look, haiti uncovered can you talk to us about this oh like i said for me Beautiful it's book. oh thank you thank you so much it's always about haiti and like I said, I feel like cooking is my sneaky way. Like, I love cooking, but I never wanted to make a career out of it. It's just right. something I was good at. And that's another thing. Maybe it's a lesson, too. It's something I was good at. And I felt like through it, I can fulfill my ultimate passion. Purpose, yeah. Right? And purpose. Thank you for using that word because that's key, which is really to connect people and have deeper conversations. So growing up here, leaving at seven, the negative things I was hearing about Haiti, Right. I learned to cook from my dad at eight years old. So I always had food as that anchor point, that yeah. little thing that I can go back to. 
And then when I started my catering business, I was like, oh, okay, I, I see the work that I'm doing. But then it hit me in 2013, like, oh, I should write a Haitian cookbook. Because my brother, right. who was born here, he's like, what happens when all the old people are dead? Who's going to make us all this food? That's you know valid. how young people are, yeah. right? He was so blunt about it. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yes, who's going to make us all this food when all the old people are dead? And he was like 20. I was like, you're right. So I wanted to encapsulate and capture the traditional cuisine. But in true Nadesh fashion, people were like, okay, let's go to Auntie Such and Such. Go to the... I was like, right. no, I don't want to do it within the perspective of a Haitian who grew up here. I want to go back to Haiti and like, mm. travel. Yeah. Because I, beyond just the food, I wanted the stories. I wanted the people. I wanted the heart of the book. So I spent like a year back and forth right. just traveling to the different region, the north, the south, all areas just really connecting to the people. So it's a coffee table cookbook okay. with over a hundred plus recipes, traditional, the ziri, the sospa, the muyon, moussa, dukunu, things people, some people haven't even heard of. Tom Tom, Tom Tom is in there, Comparet is in there. Is your family from Jeremy? For the Prince. For the Prince? <laughs> but you got, you got to, you like Tom Tom? Yeah. Lalo, all of it, but just kind of like, yes, we can have this little capsule of our traditional cuisine. Uh, but also to connect to the people, the soil, because I feel like the heart of the book was in Haiti and I had to do those strips. But through it, beyond just like these recipe book, a tour mm. sprung from it because people saw me traveling in 2014 and they were like, if you could go to Haiti, maybe I could go to right. Haiti. And right. I had people who had never been 40, 50 years old because their parents would never take them. Since 2018, when we started the Haiti Uncovered Culinary Tour, that has traveled with us to Port-au-Prince, Jacques Mel. Lately, we've been doing mainly Cap Haitian because yeah. it does have a direct flight. So every January, like clockwork, the only year we didn't go was because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. But we go. So despite what people say, don't go to Haiti, we go because, of course, we would never take people to an unsafe environment, you know, and right. we know Cap Haitian right. provides that safety. And we, right. we just got back. It's, uh, you know, January 2024. 30 of us. Yeah. So what I love about these trips is we had a woman who's in her 50s. She went to Haiti for the first time and she came with her son who's 28 years old. Mm. In 2018, we had a young woman who was like late 30s. Her mother, who hadn't been for 50 years, the following year came she back with her. So just mm. really like, and then it was such an emotional experience for right. them. So I feel like we, we talk about Haiti from the perspective of people abroad but i feel like if you really want to help haiti you gotta go just even as a tourist right explore it right. touch it feel it and then see where you fit in but we don't know haiti as people who live here we really don't we can make an assessment if you yeah. haven't been so i feel like that trip is necessary one for you to enjoy yeah. your, your country or your parents country right. as a tourist but for you to be honest with yourself and do look at the issues but look at all the skill sets, the talent, or whatever it is you have, right, right. and how can you apply it to the space? I love this. And where can they find Haiti <laughs> Uncovered? Everything is on my page, Nadej Fleurimont, on Instagram, um, any social media platform, Uh My website has everything. And then, like I said, I am a professional IPAV. <laughs> so <laughs> you can find everything I do online. I love social media because, like I said, for me, I'm a spoiled social media user because I've curated such a beautiful bubble of amazing people. Yeah. So I don't even see a lot of stuff that I keep hearing people see on social media. To me, I'm like, oh, I know Ben guy. You know, to me, it's so beautiful because I'm able to meet people like you. I'm able to connect with the audience that I've connected with. So I love answering my social media. I love posting. Yeah. I post on my own. Even if I have social media managers and I have an assistant, I love yeah. actually feeling and going on my stories and sharing. So you will find me. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you follow her Instagram, okay? And again, where can we find your restaurant? The restaurant is located in Brooklyn, 2123 K10 Avenue in Brooklyn. Oh, and I almost forgot. I'm we are launching our book. Yes. And you, uh, the little birdie told me that there's an event coming up to, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're yeah. right, you're right. Birdie's speaking <laughs> truth. But yeah, we are relaunching the book 10 years later. This book is still as phenomenal. So yes. we, we edited it, added some new recipes, a beautiful new cover. And we are having our 10th anniversary in Times Square at the Times Center. Uh, and we will, beautiful free party. 
as long as you purchase the book. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get to, we're going to have a beautiful panel discussion, beautiful theater, but also there'll be food. The food from the book, the tom -tom. I'm going to have tom tom. For me, I never had it. Really? Oh, I'm, yes. I think I'm going to put tom tom on the book. Good. Please. But you get to eat, you get to connect, you get to just really immerse yourself in the book. When is it again? May 25th. May 25th. All right. You see it on the screen. <laughs> and lastly, is there anything that you can share to aspiring um, restaurant owners? So people that want to create their own restaurant or maybe you're selling platters. This is specifically just for you. Is there anything encouraging that you can share? With them? It's hard, <laughs> but it's worth it if that's what you want to do. And then also just like a, a cautionary uh, tale, I guess uh, a tip is don't open a restaurant simply because you're a great cook. I think sometimes a lot of people do that. My mom could fait manger. I know how to cook. Right. There's so much more that goes into it. So really arm yourself with the business acumen. Like I'm very grateful that I had the experience of my catering business, but even that didn't prepare me. There's so much more. The regular dealing with the city, health department, payroll, marketing, the business development side, staffing, it's just so much. So if you really want it and you know you do love the cooking, but make sure you get the other skill sets. And that's for any business, right. but definitely plays out so much more in a restaurant because it's such a technical space and it's such an expensive operation. I don't think people also understand just right. how expensive it is running a restaurant. My catering business, I always make money because if I'm catering your wedding, you're giving me a deposit. And before your wedding happens, I'm already paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't lose unless I really mispriced you. With, cater uh, with a restaurant, you could be losing because you could be open and no one shows sure. up that day. Right. Or only 10 people showed up, but you still have staff. Yeah. You still have food. You still have your rent. So it's very, very much an expensive operation. So mm -hmm. make sure you're financially fit, like you're not dependent. That's another tip I want to give for restaurant owners. Yes. Make sure you're not fin uh, financially dependent on the restaurant making money for the first six months to a year. I would say even two years, but just for sure. Because I see restaurants open and within six to eight months, they're closed. And that just means it's poor financial planning because your constant money, I won't, like they're going to use that money to pay rent, to pay bills. Mm -hmm. Don't make sure investors are already lined up or you have like your bank account that's ready yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to fuel it because no matter how many people you see coming through sometimes at a restaurant it may not be breaking even so you still need to have backup money wow listen please make sure you follow Nadesh so that you can get some more tips Nadesh thank you so much thank you so much Alain. for I having us you. we have learned so much from you I'm still, I cannot wait to end this so I can finish my sandwich. But you are so inspirational. Even just talking with you, I felt like I was receiving pointers and was being very well encouraged. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank Please continue what you're doing for the community because it is an, you're literally leaving in a lasting imprint. So, um, and I, I, you have my support. No, so. thank you. And I appreciate you and your platform because again, I always say like, you know, we live in such a space like where we don't have to do things like this. So when I see... A person like yourself who wasn't born in Haiti, but who still wants to connect and connect the Haitian community, connect other people to the culture. It does my heart good because it's not necessary, but right. it is necessary. Right, so thank right. you for the work. Thank you for promoting us because your work also is educating someone who didn't even know I existed. And right. now they get to see us. And I appreciate you for taking your time, your resources, your money to be able to make something like this happen. Thank you, Nada. Come here. Oh, thank you. Amazing. So